Hi everyone, Kelly here, and today I want to talk about the books that I have read so far in January. I meant to upload this a couple days ago, like over the weekend, where it was actually halfway through the month, but then my daughter decided to pass on her stomach virus to me. Like, she was sick all last week. I was sick over the weekend. I swear that this school year, it has just been one sickness after another after another. Like, I think I have had just like every single thing that is possible. I shouldn't say that because then something else will pop up. <laughs> but she just keeps bringing home stuff from preschool that I get because um, I'm the one like taking care of her while she's sick. So yeah, I, I didn't record this weekend. I didn't do anything this weekend, but lay around and feel horrible. Um, and then my cat is also here joining me today because of course, as soon as I get out the camera, he wants to be around. But let's talk about the things that I read. Everything, both, mostly everything except for one, like read aloud with my daughter, was part of the short stack readathon that I'm hosting with Kara from Wild Book Garden. You can still participate if you want to because it's the whole of January and it's just reading shorter books or shorter works because some of these would be like short stories or whatever. So most of them are a part of that. Before I talk about them in order, I'm just going to talk about it in the order I read them, except for I have a couple that I can't talk about because of the Harper Collins union strike. So if you don't know that the Harper Collins editors and other employ some of the other employees are on strike right now for fair wages and so they've asked for reviewers to not review Harper Collins titles during the strike. And so I had a couple that went with that. I have um two of the Chronicles of Narnia, The Horse and His Boy and The Magician's Nephew. And I listened to these audio and it was a audio produced by a Harper Audio. And so I won't be reviewing these at this time. If you want more information about the strike, I will link some information down below if you want to check it out. The other thing that I am not going to talk about because I DNF'd it is I had started and got, I don't know, like I think maybe 20%, 30% into Heartbeat Braves by Pamela Sanderson, I believe is her name. And this is a contemporary romance type novel and it is the beginning of a series and so I had it on a list of series I wanted to start this year and it just didn't work out for me. Um, I was just not into the writing style. I wasn't really into the main characters. They were kind of bugging me, um, like the personalities of the main characters. And so I have decided this year, I'm just not going to push through books if I'm not enjoying them, especially like fiction. If it's a nonfiction and I'm learning something from it and it's just a hard topic or something and I have to push through, that's different than if I'm reading something simply for fun and enjoyment. Romance is simply for fun and enjoyment. And I'm, I'm done with reading something that's probably gonna end up being three stars. You know, if I'm gonna have to make myself read it, I'm not gonna do it this year. Like that is my goal is to DNF books that I am not enjoying, at least fiction books that I am not enjoying. So I am DNFing that one. So now let's talk about them in the order I read them. I did have two books that I had read on the last day of December that I didn't talk about in my December wrap up. I forgot because I don't have physical copies of them. And they were two volumes of manga. It was volumes one and two of Blood on the Tracks, which I didn't write down the author. So I'll just put the cover up here. And this one is a like psychological kind of story. Um, I don't know if it'll be a drama or a thriller. At this point, it just seems like very, you could tell things are messed up. Um, and it is like a mother son relationship and it feels very ominous. Like not a lot happens on the page, but the whole time I'm just like waiting for the other shoe to drop. And so hold on, the cat is hitting the tripod. And so I don't really know how to describe this because I think more will happen and more will develop as it goes. And at this point it just gives you that feeling that something is coming and you don't know what it is. Um, so I am enjoying these which sounds kind of weird because it is like a constant feeling of anxiety the whole time I'm reading it, but I want to know what is going to happen next. Now moving on to things that actually started in January, I have The Lost Letter by Mimi Matthews, and this is a shorter novel, and this is a historical fiction romance. Her romances are very kind of slow burn because there's not any um, sex scenes in them. So it takes a while to develop the relationship. And this is kind of a second chance romance. So these two main characters had like been courting before he went off to war. The, the hero goes off 
to war and she's writing him letters and he's ignoring her letters and so she's just like okay he didn't really care for me he wasn't actually in love with me um and she so she's moving on some tragic things happen in her life that kind of bring her down in station so now instead of a lady she is a governess and then um the man is back from war has some you know injuries and things that make him more of a recluse now like he doesn't want to go out in public now after his injuries from war and she goes to visit him because the sis his sister requests that this woman come and visit him and so they have a lot of miscommunication because obviously some things happened while he was at war with these letters and um they didn't really communicate very well before he left and so now there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of like assumptions about what happened and so there is a lot of miscommunication which is usually something i don't like but in this one i think it felt like it made sense why there would have been this miscommunication like it made sense of like why the hurt is there and why um they don't really want to come out and say it because of you know their pride and all that um and i thought that the kind of angst and feelings were really well done and i was rooting for them and I just thought it was lovely. I'm glad it was short because it was one of those where I felt like if it was any longer, it would have dragged on a bit with the miscommunication, but it was just enough that I was invested and was excited to see their relationship play out. And I don't think I mentioned, but I gave this four stars. And then next I picked up a short story called The Most Dangerous Game by Richard Connell. And this is more of a classic short story. I can't remember when it was written, but I remember reading it in high school um, as you know, like part of English class. And it had stuck with me as a story that I just remembered details about it, you know, however many years ago that was. I mean, it was in the 90s, so quite a while ago. And so I wanted to revisit it as an adult, see if I still liked it. And I actually think this is like just a perfect short story in terms of pacing and, you know, character and payoff and all that. It It, it is up there with The Birds by Daphne du Maurier for me as just like a really well written short story. I will say since it's a classic, there is a couple times where there is um, derogatory terms used for different people of color. Um, so that was the only thing that would have brought it down for me. Um, but you know, I also have to think about it being written so long ago. Um, but in terms of like pacing, in terms of the villain, it was really good and kept my interest the whole time and it'll be one that will once again be memorable to me. I don't want to say a lot about it because it is a short story but it's basically about this man who is a well-known hunter like he travels around the world hunting and he ends up stranded on this island with another hunter and you know things happen from there and I just think it is like I said a really well done short story if you just want something that'll keep your interest the whole time and have a fun villain to follow. And I keep forgetting to tell you my ratings for these things. This was a five star short story. And then next I picked up Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? Big Questions from Tiny Mortals About Death by Caitlin Dowdy. And this is a nonfiction kind of collection of answers to questions. So she is a mortician and she's written several different books about what it's like to be a mortician or she wrote one about um, working in a, in a um, crematorium. So like it, all of her books are about death. And this one is actually for children. So this, she says that, you know, people ask her all time questions because she is this like nonfiction writer about death. And she said that children ask the most interesting questions. So she had compiled this book based on questions that kids ask about death. And so I'll just give you a couple examples of some of the like things they have asked, like, can I keep my parents skull after they die? Um, we buried my dog in the backyard. What would happen if we dug him up now? Will I poop when I die? So just all these different questions about death or about dead bodies. And um, I just thought this was really fun to read. It's the kind of book that probably should be paced out a little bit, um, even though it's short, just because it starts to blend in together. But it, it was like if something you could just have on kind of like a podcast, like while you're driving or something like that, I would find this, I thought this was really entertaining to read. Like I said, it's directed at children, but I think adults can find it humorous. Um, and also I, I wanted to see if I should read this with my daughter because she is a little fascinated with different death practices. Like she is really into, um, 
mummification, like when she learned about ancient Egypt. So I wanted to see if this is something I could share with her. But there were parts that were a little too gruesome, I think, for her at the age of seven. But maybe in a couple years, I would read this with my daughter because there were just some like really funny moments, but also a lot of information about what happens to our bodies after we die, which is just interesting to find out about. Um, so I would recommend this if you just want something to kind of pop in. I listen to it because she narrates it. So if you just wanted to get the audiobook and pop it in while you're driving, or if you just want to pick up and read one of these like different questions each day or something like that, that's how I would recommend doing it. And I did think it was really interesting and gave this one four stars. And then next I picked up Star Child, a biographical constellation of Octavia Estelle Butler by E.B. Zaboy. And what this is, is this is a biography about Oct Octavia E. Butler, but it is like some of the of it is poetry. Some of it is just regular written like autobiographical information that E.B. Zaboy re researched. There are pictures and there are quotes from Octavia E. Butler. And this one was really good. Um, this is written towards a teen audience to kind of introduce them to the life of Octavia E. Butler. So you have to go in knowing that, knowing that it's not gonna go deep dive into her life. So um, as long as you approach it, knowing that this isn't gonna have every detail there is about <laughs> the author. Um, but I thought there was some really interesting tidbits. I also like how the way she framed this was kind of like time periods of like what was going on during her childhood, during her teenage years, during her early adulthood that would have influenced her writing. Like there were talks about the baby boom and that her being a child of the baby boom and the red scare and um kind of the space race and all of that really influencing her and her like wanting to write science fiction and basing like connecting that to like real world like issues about race and other things like that and you could tell how she was influenced in her writing and I also just think this is a passion project of E.B. Savoy who obviously loves the writing of Octavia E. Butler and wanted to do a tribute towards her and it made me want to read other things by E.B. Savoy and she also puts in her like um information in the back like where she kind of talks about why she wrote this. She talks about some other authors who were heavily influenced by Octavia Butler and it made me want to pick up those authors too. And so I have now a, a new authors that I want to look into. And so I would recommend this, but just keep in mind that it's short and a lot of this is poetry. So it's not going to have like a full look at her life, but you, you will get something out of this. And I did enjoy reading that and gave it four stars. And then next is the only like full length book that I have read so far. I read this with my daughter. This is Starry River of the Sky by Grace Lynn. This was a reread for me. Um, I had read this on my own, I think last year or two years ago. And my daughter and I had read Where the Mountain Meets the Moon and what is the other one? Whatever the other one that looks like this in her series of books. We had read both of those books last year and we had read one of them with my mom. And so my mom came to visit for a week last week and um, we read this with her because we thought it'd be nice to share it with her since she had read one of Grace Lynn's other books with us. So we read this together in a week and just really loved it. I gave it five stars. I think the first time I read it, five stars again this time. My daughter also really loved it. And I just love the way Graceland takes these stories and blends them with Chinese folklore. And my cat is messing with a box. Kitty, 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 kitty. And I didn't really say what this was about. Um, this is, follows a boy named Randy who is running away from home. He ends up at this inn and ends up working as like a chore boy at the end. He has a, at the end, he has a really bad attitude about everything. Um, but I like how his character grows throughout the book that like his, you see why he has such a bad attitude, what has happened in his past and like the people that he meets at the end, how they, you know, bring more out of him, cause him to grow and how the stories that they tell at the end. And he also ends up telling stories, how those stories really heal him and lead him towards forgiveness. And I just think it's a beautiful story, especially for, parents if you want to read it with your children. I think there's a lot to talk about in here and it was just a really beautiful story. So that was five stars like I said. And then back to shorter things. I read 
Light for the World to See by Kwame Alexander. Um, the subtitle is A Thousand Words on Race and Hope. And this is just three poems. The book itself is kind of written and kind of, you know, like it's spreading out the poems. So this could have just been like three pages long, but um, this has made it a little more artistic. I ended up actually listening to this. So I listened to it twice. I think it's only like 20 minutes long to listen to like all three poems. And I liked listening. So the first time I listened to it, I followed along with the book. And the second time I just sat and listened to it. And his voice one is really amazing. I just like listening to his voice and listening to him speak about his own, like, you know, say his own poetry was really moving. And all three of these poems, just like the subtitle says, are about race and about hope. They're all very current. Like he said, gives little intros on each of them about what bring, brought them up. Um, I know one of them he wrote right after Obama won office. And I think some of them involve like, um, you know, events of 2020. Um, so yeah, there are yeah, one of them is after the killing of George Floyd. Um, and so, yeah, they all have very current relations and listening to them was just really impactful. And this is one of those things I'm like, should I even rate this? I gave it four stars um, because the second and third poems didn't really like stick with me as much. But the first poem was definitely a five star poem. And I would just recommend listening to it even just for that first poem. But all of them are good poems and it's so short to listen to. I would just pick up the audiobook. I mean, you can obviously read it physically, but hearing him read it was really good because he also in the first poem brings in some music and kind of pacing that really adds to the way the poem is spoken. And it was really amazing. Next, I picked up a manga. I read The Promised Neverland by Kayu Shirai. And this is um, volume six. So I'm a few volumes into this. And so I can't really say what this volume is about, um, but, but the very beginning, it's following a group of orphans that are living at this orphanage and living a happy life. And then they find out that things might not be as happy and as normal as they thought they were. Um, so this definitely gets a little dark and all that. Um, this one was good. A lot of new things were brought in to the story, new characters, new themes, new stuff happening. So I enjoyed this one. I think I gave this one specifically. Did I give this one four or five stars? I can't remember. I'll put my rating here. But it was definitely a good installment in the series. And the last thing that I read in this first half of the month is I read The Fragment of Sanditon by Jane Austen. So this is a this book here is a collection of Lady Susan, which is a novella. And then the Watsons and Sanditon are both fragments that she had started before she passed away. And I'd already read Lady Susan and the Watson, so I just had to read Sanditon. It's just 12 chapters of a book that she was starting right before she died. And so you don't get a lot from it. So if I were just reading Sanditon, I would have only given it three stars. But I'm going to say for this whole collection, because over time I've read all of it, that I would give the whole collection four stars. Um, but like Sanditon itself, I think it's just such a small snippet of what is going to be what would have been a much larger novel and it's just like introducing a ton of characters and you're not get you're just getting the intro you're not really diving into any plot yet that it, it wasn't much for me I mean you could see the potential of where Austin could have taken that story and there were some interesting characters introduced but you know since there is no conclusion written by her there has been like a television show that continues it on um, but not like necessarily in the vein that Austin would have taken it. Um, so I haven't seen the show. I probably will at some point, but you know, it, it you'll never know how like Jane Austen would have finished the book. Um, so I would still like recommend because I, I just kind of want to read everything she's written. So I still have two of her novels and this I think is like all of the like unfinished works or short works. I, I think I have her juvenilia and that would be it. But yeah, I did, you know, enjoy it just fine but it, you know it definitely it feels like just a little intro beginning of a of a story with a ton of characters so you don't get a lot from it so that is the end of everything that I have read so far in January so quite a few things maybe not as many things as I thought I was going to be reading in January I've been taking it slow because I obviously my daughter was sick for many days her stomach virus lasted a long time like normally you know like you get your stomach virus you're done after like a day like you feel horrible no for her it lasted like many days she ended up out of school for 
four days because of it. So we had a lot of time, you know, time me taking care of her and then me being sick. So yeah, that has probably kept me from reading as much in this first half of January because, you know, I was reading all short things. So I should, I feel like I should have read a lot more short things, but it's fine. I'm taking it slow. I'm just, you know, we're just surviving <laughs> sickness. But then also I have been trying to like get more into my hobbies this year. It was a goal in 2022 that I would focus more on other hobbies in addition to reading. And I didn't really accomplish that, but I feel like already this year, I feel like I'm doing that and I want to make it a thing. Um, my mom, when she was here, she taught me how to crochet and I've already like started a project and you know, quite a ways into it. And so like, I'm enjoying that process. That'll be a new hobby. I've also gotten back into hand quilting in the last couple months. And so I've, you know, been diving into that again this month. And so I'm excited that maybe I'll be reading a little less, but I will be like having more rounded life in terms of like multiple hobbies, which is what I want to head towards. I still like, you know, love reading and I want it to be one of my main hobbies, but I want to enjoy other hobbies as well. So that's my kind of update of what's going on so far in January. I hope you are enjoying everything you're reading and doing. Hopefully you are doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye.